Hi there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Michael's 3D World. Well, I hope I have been away from this channel for about seven months now, and not because I have lack of things to do, but I was always trying to come up with, in this 3D printing world, some what I would call useful items for myself. And I've actually developed a few things myself, uh, come up with some ideas of practical uses for the 3D printers. Now, I'm not taking away from anybody out there that's doing anything else with the 3D printing. Uh, there's, all, uh, there's all kinds of little clocks, trinkets, and everything else you can build, print, figurines, whatnot. You can have a lot of fun in the 3D printing world as a hobby. Uh, you could also design and make things and print things and sell for money. Uh, I'm not here to do the sell for money thing, but I do have some ideas I want to share with you guys. And I also want to bring you along with, you know, the process of how I come up with something, uh, draw it. I'm going to take you through the drawing steps and then take you to the printer for the printing of it and then show you the practical application of the item as well. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got a, probably about two or three videos I'm going to do in a series here that is, you know, some of the things I've come up with that I use the 3D printer for. And uh, also I've improved my camera and I've improved my sound quality. Uh, so you're gonna see some things that are a little bit different than they were before in my previous videos that I've had out there. I appreciate everybody that's hung in there with me, that's been watching my videos. I haven't been able to respond to all the comments that people have been leaving. I will get better at that on this particular channel. Uh, I also have another channel I, I do that's called RMD Creations. This is called RM3D Creations. But I'll quit talking and start showing you some more stuff here. So. This project was inspired, you know, the necessity is the mother of invention, right? So I had bought a couple of these Heritage uh, 22 long rifle or 22 mag revolvers. These are single action revolvers that you got to cock to shoot that's single action versus just squeeze the trigger, which would be a double action setup. But what I've discovered with these particular pistols is that the iron sights are horrible on them. You might run across one occasionally that the iron sights are actually in good shape. Uh, that they're that the front sight is on center but when it's not you need to resort to something else and what I did I've resorted to putting a red dot optic on the on the top of this and it makes a really fun a little pistol to shoot I'm going to show you how I did that now I originally had this set up and I drilled it in my drill press had it clamped up to an angle plate but I thought there's a better way so I came up with a drill jig so and if you guys don't know what a drill jig is, a drill jig is something you put on an item and it has usually a, like a hardened steel bushing so it doesn't wear out as fast against your drill bits. And then you could put it on whatever your device is or whatever your object is and drill in precision location holes into your object, right? Now this can be used for what I'm going to use here for drilling, drilling and tapping holes on the back of this uh, 22 revolver. The other thing it can be used for is if you've got the a wood project that you need hold precision holes drilled in a corner or from an edge or something like that you can also 3d print yourself a fixture that way too or for for that application so anyway i'm going to jump in here and show you what i did to draw this up and what this does let me show you how it works first and then we'll go in and show you how i drew it up all right so what i needed to do here is drill and tap two precision holes in the top of this precisionly located holes in the top of this particular uh, revolver and what I did is develop this drill jig. As you can see, there's two holes precisionally located. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna place this drill fixture right on the revolver. And what this does is snap right down into place. Now, as you can see here, I just realized a little bit ago that I had designed this for longer barreled revolvers. And so I went out and bandsawed a notch in it to clear the front sight so that this thing would sit so this was sitting down on the barrel properly so everything was squared up and aligned the way it's supposed to be. The way this is designed is that these ears come down and guide over the, over the back here and come down near the trigger guard and keep things rotated so that things aren't tilted this way or this way. And then I've got this part here on this side so it sits down flat on the barrel which gets things squared this way. That way when you hand drill, and that's what the whole idea behind this is so I could hand drill these holes into this piece precisionly and not have it be out of square or wander off center or anything like that. So at the end of this video, we're going to drill and tap this using these fixtures and we're going to install a weaver style mount on here. 
That way I can put a red dot sight on here. So that's one of the practical uses for the 3D printer. The cool part about this is this can be used over and over and over. Let's get into drawing and I'm gonna show you how I designed and drew this up. And as you can see, when you have a finished product in your hand, it makes it a lot easier to see what you're gonna do. When you don't, you've got to picture this image of what you're trying to create in your head in 3D and take measurements and come up with some dimensions that work for your application. Let's go into the uh, Fusion 360 and let's draw this up and get another one printed. Uh, now that I know that this needs to be cleared for the front sight, I'm going to draw this exact same model up, but then I'm going to also put a groove in there that clears the front sight for, the, for going forward when, as I do more of these type of uh, fixtures for these type of revolvers. Let's jump in and get on the computer and do some designing. Okay, folks, first thing you do is open up your Fusion 360 by Autodesk. Uh, um, you got your home screen right here. We're going to start off with a simple sketch. And what I like to do with the sketch is capture as much of the feature that I'm trying to create in one drawing or one 2D sketch before I convert it to 3D and start doing some modifications. That's what I found to be the easiest. So we're going to do some simple stuff here. Uh, I'm going to do just some straight line drawings because I have an idea of what I want to have drawn up. I've sketched it. Um, and I'll show you right here. I've got always create a little sketch of about what I want to have done. And I'm hanging out here in the lower hand, right hand, uh, lower part of your screen here. So I'll hold that picture up one more time in case you missed it. But yeah, I just draw a quick sketch up with a few dimensions as to how I want to create it. That helps me get there a little quicker. So I'm going to go up here and click right here, line. And I'm just going to click right here in the center, you know, of the screen. And as you can see, you start to get a uh, dimension. And it tells you where, what degree you want it drawn at. And obviously this one here, I want to just go horizontal. And this is going to be 160 millimeters long. And I draw everything in millimeters just because it is much easier than converting from fractions. So once I've got that drawn, uh, I'll keep drawing lines, of, of, you know, to get my outline of what I want. This particular line is going to be 70 millimeters long. And then, so as you can see, this is, you know, takes shape relatively quick. And then this is going to be 37 millimeters long. And, all right, we're going to draw another line straight down here that is actually 54.431 millimeters long. I'm going to go back horizontal here again. And this is going to be 33.124. Back up. Whoops, not there. You can always hit your escape key. And this is going to be 14. 431 long. And then just about done here with this profile. Just that quick and easy. Now what you can do is when you know this is going to end here, you can do like that and it'll... Uh, square things up for you just like that and then we got one last line we're gonna go from here down to here so right there and I'm using my scroll key to scroll in and out so if I wanted to scroll in and out straight in and out from here let's say if I wanted to pull it down here you can just do like that you know put your mouse scroll anyway I like to scroll in and out quite a bit just to be able to work in greater detail and see things up close so now what I'm gonna do is finish the sketch we're going to call that done hit finish sketch then i'm going to hit extrude and i'm going to click on this feature now right down here this orbit i like to click on that so i can spin things around hit escape let me go here and it'll show which way way out however thick i want to make this thing i can go this way or i can go this way it, honestly at this point it doesn't really matter to me this is going to be 30 millimeters wide there now I have my my profile that you saw earlier. I'm just, this is so close to being done already. It's not even funny, but you can see how I have this laid out. Now what I like to do here is I'm going to go and draw on this end. And this software makes it very easy. I can click sketch here again, create sketch, right there, and I can draw something right on that face. Now I know by my dimensions that I need this thickness to be a certain height, or I'm going to create a, a U shape view in here but i need to like reference something to get it to make it accurate to make it centered and to be where i want it to be so what i can do is i can draw a rectangle uh, like this and then i can constrain it so i can actually then uh, create a dimension from here 
to here and, and tell it I want that to be 16.59. 16.59. And now I've got that dimension where I want it. And I want this dimension. Right here to be 17.163. So here we go, 17.163. Now we've got it the width and height from here that I want it and the width that I want it. Now I've got to make sure it's centered. How we're going to do that? I can dimension it from side to side here. Since I know I do this at 30 millimeters wide and this is 17.163, then I can constrain this dimension from, say, here. To here to be a 6.4185. Oh, come on. 6.4185. And now, as you can see, that's back in center. Then we can say finish sketch. Now that you've got that feature drawn, you can extrude it. And what I, can, what I like to do is you can spin it around so you can see the backside. And you can extrude it through that surface there. Hit OK. Now you've got that drawn in place just where you want it. Now we need to do another sketch like that on the other end for the barrel. This is where the barrel is going to rest. So I'm going to click on there. I hit there again. As you saw, let me do that again for you just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go to create sketch. Click there. Click that surface. It's going to bring that surface right to me to let me do what I want to do with it. And I could come over. I know this is 30 millimeters wide, so I can draw this 15 millimeters. So now I've got me a starting point. I can take this and go up because I know this is 30 millimeters high. And now I can go ahead and trim this away if I want because I don't need that anymore. And there's better ways to do this and there's other ways to do this. This is just my quick hack way of getting in there quick. Uh, but I want this to, to be, uh, what was it, 16.157 wide. So I can do 16.157 slash 2, and it'll draw it to the width that I want. And then I can do the same thing on the other side. As you can see, this is 8.079. But now, if I wanted to, I can go from here, do me a two-point rectangle, right? And so that I know that this rectangle needs to be as you can see here, it's asking for the width 16.157 wide. Then I hit tab and I can go 8.5. And now I have a rectangle the size that I want. Then I can go ahead and get rid of this other, that line, that line, that line, because I don't need those just to clean up my sketch. And now I have a sketch here, right? I can go ahead and extrude that as well and do the same thing I did before. I hit extrude. Then I'll come around so I can see the back side of this and I can extrude it through to there and hit OK. Now I have that feature in place where I want it. Now we're starting to get something really close to my finished work, right? Now what I'm going to add into my current site that I don't have right now is this little a notch that comes down in here to clear the front site. So I'm going to do that sketch again, go back to this feature, and I want to have something that's going to be five millimeters wide and about eight millimeters tall from about right here. So here again, I'm going to do a, I know that 15 is the center. And then I'm going to come up. I know that this was 30 millimeters tall. So I'm just going to draw a line right there like that. But then I can come back down. I want to come back down that I know this was eight and a half plus eight, so it's 16 and a half millimeters. So now I've got me a, low, a point right here, 16 and a half millimeters deep. And then I know I want to go five millimeters wide, so I can go two and a half each way. So I come from here. And, and I guarantee you, folks, there's, there's faster ways to do this. I'm, I would call myself pretty much a rookie at drawing. And as you see here, I've gone 2.5 each way. Now I'm going to go up. 8 millimeters, then I'm going to come across 5 millimeters, I'm going to come back down 8, and now I have my rectangle. And I can go in here, I'll zoom in here and clean up all this other stuff I don't need, so I don't need those lines anymore. 
and get rid of that line. So now all I have is this. Now I did come up a little bit above. I went eight and a half high here. That's not a big deal. Uh, the important thing is I have my depth from here down, which is eight millimeters, and I have my width of five. And I can hit finish sketch here, and then I can select that and hit extrude. Let's rotate it around a little bit. And as you can see here, it's wanting to go this way. I'm gonna, I can flip that I just by typing in a negative 25 millimeter. And it's going to cut that in there just like that. And I hit OK. Now I've got my groove in here to clear my front sight. Now what I'm going to do, there's a few more features I want to add on here. Uh, I like to put some soft edges on some things here. So I can go up here and grab fillet. And I can click here while holding the control key and click here and say I want a four millimeter fillet there, which I just did, and hit OK. And then I want to do another fillet up here because this helps guide it past the revolver, the revolver frame a little bit. And I want this to be a five millimeter. Hit OK. And now what I have is the almost the complete uh, fixture. Drill jig fixture done. All that's left now to put on it is the two holes that I'll be actually drilling into, uh, using to drill the holes, and basically to put my drill jig bushings into so I can drill the holes in the gun or the revolver. So we're going to go ahead and sketch here. As you can see here, if you ever wonder what your orientation you're sitting at when it does that for you, you can look here and go, oh, it's right there. So I know that these tall ears are at the bottom. I can go back and click on there again like that. And then what we'll do is we'll draw in the location uh, for the, the two holes. Now, I know I want the holes to be in center, right? So I'm going to pick here. That's going to be the center of that and the center there. Now, what I need is the location up for the, in the distance, the center to center between the holes. So we're, we're going to draw, draw that in next. All righty. So I know how far from the end I want this. So I'm going to pick up the center right here. As you can see, that automatically clicks the center. And I'm going to go straight up to the center of my hole is 20.147 or 417, 20.417 right there. And we also know the center to center to, oops, click the wrong thing. We also know center to center of my holes is 12.7 is where I want it. That's what's on my, on my mount. Then we'll draw two circles. They're 6.62 each. So we'll draw one there. And here I'm clicking create circle. It's the center point diameter. And there again, 6.62. And then we can say finish sketch. What we're going to see here is my two holes. Now, I can go in here at any time and delete. I'm just clicking on them. And deleting those lines to get them out of there. So when I select, I want to extrude these two holes, that one and this one. And I want to extrude it all the way through to this surface here. So I'm going to select that surface. And now I've got holes that are all the way through. Done and done. So there's my size holes. Now what I did in here, folks, is I have uh, drew these to fit a drill jig bushing that I bought. I'll leave the... the link to the or in the description below to the drill jig bushing that I use. Now I want to go up here and I want to put a soft edge on these two surfaces here. And we can put, you know, two backspace. You can put a three, put a five, you know, whatever size fillets you want to put in there. We'll just put a two, which is plenty, and hit OK. Now what I've done here, that's, that's the entire drill fixture right there. In all of its glory. It's done and complete, ready to print. Um, and these dimensions that I threw in here are the dimensions on approved out fixture that I've drawn that works and I've printed and actually used. That's how simple it is. There's your your drill fixture. And you could do some other stuff too here. Now I could soften up these edges right here, but what I do is I print this in a different fashion. I print this sitting like this. So it's, it's printing this bottom part here is sitting on the table. And to make things life easier, I can go in here and now save this. I'll do a file. Uh, let's do a save. 
and I want to do under uh, it's called, I've got a folder here called guns and parts jigs and then I can call it the as you can see here I've got the heritage drill fixture guide this is going to be a modified because now it's got that relief groove in it so heritage drill fixture drill guide with site clearance kind of important thing to have as I just now discovered I originally designed this one to have for a longer barreled version and so I can save that now and what I can do in the future if I wanted to is I can shorten this up if I do a snub nose barrel I can actually put this groove a little deeper into it easy enough to modify to do that when it comes time and then I can print it and what I'll do here now is I could do file 3d print click on that hit OK and what it's going to do is open up my Ultimaker Cura and I'll bring that over here to the screen as soon as it opens oh there it goes now it's open now you can see how this is set on the table now this one I printed on my Ender 5 you can print it on on your Ender 3 uh, there's my Ender 5 so you can see it fits on there real nice no problem some of the settings I was using is the layer height is 0.2 it's just my standard quality uh, wall Line width 0.4s, as you can see. Uh, let's see here. I did a, I think I did a 20, yeah, 20% infill on this, uh, and then 100% infill overlap percentage. Uh, temperatures I'm doing on my particular printer is a 210 on the uh, nozzle temp and 60 on the bed, and then I've got print speed of 80 and 40 and there you go there you have it that's pretty much all of it i don't do fan speeds are at 100 i don't do any uh of the gener no generating of any support no build plate adhesion type you know bram raft skirt i don't do anything i just hit none then i hit ready to slice and then i slice it it's about five hours 56 grams of material five point uh, five hours and five minutes and i can save that to my disk under my Ender 5 files and then a uh, heritage tap drill. Let's see here. What I'm gonna overwrite one here. So I'm gonna call it heritage drill jig uh, site clearance just so I know it's my newest one. Also, I could use Rev 1, 2, 3, 4 as well. Uh, then we hit save. And then next thing I'm gonna do is pull up my whether you guys have done this or not. I've got my all my printers hooked to my machines wirelessly. And, and I print through OctaPrint. Now we can go in here and upload file and hit print. And then we'll have a printed, a printed file that we can use or printed part that we can use and finish my project. Okay, we've got both of our fixtures made. Uh, I've got the tap fixture here, or I'm sorry, drill fixture made and I also made a tap fixture. The tap fixture is just identical to the drill fixture except for the fact that the holes are in it or a different diameter to accommodate the tap that you will be using. Uh, I have a 648 tap that I'm actually putting in for this particular uh, job that I'm doing on this particular revolver. Uh, your taps may vary in size, so I would suggest you take your measurements, draw them to the size you need them to guide your tap, and I'll show you how that's going to be used here in a minute, and uh, go from there. But really simple, change your whole diameter, you know, re-slice, reprint, and you got yourself a tap fixture to go along with your drill fixture. Now these are some that I have had here. I've got these other ones that I just drew up on this video printing right here behind me right now because it has a new site fixture, a site feature clearance built into it. Or these, I took my bandsaw and I opened them up so I could do this particular revolver and show you how I'm using these drill jigs. Anyway, let's get up close and personal with this revolver and I'll show you how these go on and how I, how I drill them and how I can drill these using just my DeWalt drill and the proper drill bit with the proper drill bushing and get a hole put in this thing so we can uh, mount our scope mount onto it. Now, as you can see here, I've taken the cylinder pin and the cylinder out of the revolver in order to do this. As I said before, this fixture slides right down over the revolver just like this. Now I do bump this back this direction so it's up tight against here. So I can, when I use the second fixture, it hits the same location, puts the drilled holes in the proper spot. Now I am gonna use a little bit of lube on here in my drill bushing. Just put a little bit down each hole. 
just to aid in drilling. As you can see, this drill fits really nice right down in here. With light pressure, I can drill this hole. Just like that. And now I have a, two perfectly precise drilled holes into my revolver. I can pull this back off. As you can see, the holes are there. We'll wipe that clean. And there I have my two holes right where I want them. Next thing I'll use is my drill tap fixture. I can slide that right back on here. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of lube down here before I run the tap in. This is all lined up. This is all once again lined up back against the face here. Pushed down square against the barrel. Bottomed out back here so everything is nice and square. And then I'll take my tap and my little T-handle here. And we'll tap those two holes. Now we have two perfectly tapped holes. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and show you how the screws fit in it. Now that we have it all drilled and tapped, let's go ahead and do a little test fit and see how well we did. And now I like to get the screws just started in there lightly. So it looks like both of them find the hole very easily. Everything's just dead in line with one another. And just like that, you have a weaver styled mount on your revolver using the two, two drill jigs. Pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. So anyway, that's a useful application for your uh, 3D printer. You can make jigs and fixtures to help aid in performing other tasks. I thought that was pretty cool. So I just thought I had to share that with you guys. Hey guys, this, is, this has been a fun project. We've made two 3D printed drill fixtures and a tap fixture to modify my revolver. This is some of the useful stuff you can do with your 3D printer. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you found it informative and helpful and somewhat educational. Uh, we'll be doing some more stuff like this coming up here real soon. Hope you guys uh, get out there and have some fun. Enjoy your 3D printing hobby. And this is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And we'll see you on the next video.